You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob, and this is episode number 440. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. We appreciate it very much. We definitely do appreciate it. Again, thank you for the reviews, the shares, especially of that one episode, if you know what I'm talking about. It really does make a difference for us. Today's question is brought to you by Drone You Live. We're doing another live class. If you want to turn your passion into profit, you want to make some money with drones and go commercial, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to get your license and then put you inside the community where you can get all the other training so you can become a world-class pilot and truly get your business off of the ground. So make sure you check out DroneYouLive.com. Right now, there's only so many spots available. And we'll be holding these classes in Denver, Colorado, and Austin, Texas. So if you are near those two locations, you are not going to want to miss this. Also, little secret, I may or may not be offering some in-person hands-on training, some cinematography training. So if you're interested in that, just let us know. Oh, we're saving a day to make all that possible for you guys. That's a nice little bonus. It is a nice little bonus. Yeah. Hmm. Well, See what happens there. Yeah, let's uh, let's out. get right into this question. It's an interesting one. We're going to talk today about if you're just getting into video editing, what's the best way to do it? Hello guys, my name is Kevin Flynn. I'm from a small town in Iowa, kind of new to the drone world. I've been flying a Phantom 3 for about six or eight months now, and I'm wanting to get into the video editing uh, portion of flying, and I didn't know if you guys would have any suggestions on some good entry-level software, um, and maybe some tips and tricks on video editing. I love the podcast, and uh, keep up the good work. Thanks. Kevin, thank you very much. That's, uh, it is a good question, and we know that we've got a lot of people out there that this question is, uh, for lack of a better way to say it, below. I mean, but there, we also know that there's a lot of people that are just getting into this, and for them, I think this is very, very relevant. How do they get started in editing? Today's question is brought to you by Videoblocks. Have you ever needed stock video or images for products or productions, and you just couldn't find what you were looking for, then you've got to check out Videoblocks.com. Videoblocks is an affordable subscription-based stock media website that offers unlimited access to premium stock footage. With over 115,000 HD videos, motion graphics, After Effects templates, and so much more to choose from, Videoblox has exactly what you're looking for, even stock music. Videoblocks.com is offering Ask Drone You listeners a year subscription for only $99. That's $50 off the usual price. Now think about that, guys. $99 for one year, 115,000 HD clips. Get your yearly subscription for $99 at videoblocks.com forward slash drone. That's V-I-D-E-O-B-L-O-C-K-S dot com slash D-R-O-N-E. Now guys, I've been around this site and I have to say, whether you're uploading your own aerial footage or you're buying stock footage, this website is so fast and convenient and what you can find on it is incredible. It's truly an amazing library for just one low annual fee. Check it out, videoblocks.com forward slash drone. Big question. Sit down, put your seatbelt on because you're going to need it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, um, I'm excited. Video editing is one of those things that it takes a long time to learn. There's a very long learning curve to it. Um, you could try to create a two minute long real estate video at the beginning of that and it take two days or 15 hours. And then six months down the line, that same two minute video could take you 45 minutes to edit. Right. Um, and it, it's a huge learning curve. Um, but there's a couple of key points here I just want to want to hit for you guys. You should try to learn on a program that will set you up and set the right foundation for the program you intend to use in time on the platform you intend to use in time. For example, uh, if you're a Windows guy, you're probably going to want to get into Adobe Premiere Pro. If that's the case, 
just go into Creative Cloud and buy Premiere Pro and just start going through tutorials on YouTube or wherever um, and start learning them. If you're a Mac user, uh, you can learn so much with iMovie. It's an unbelievable. And iMovie and Final Cut Pro are made by the same people. So if you learn iMovie, you learn the intricacies, the nuances and whatnot. A lot of that information is going to transition over to Final Cut Pro. Um, I would say another really good program for people who are just getting started with uh, video editing is the GoPro Studio. It does a lot of cool stuff. It can make time lapses for you. You can blade and clip footage, put it in a timeline. They've got a music library. Like it's a, it's a really good entry level platform. Uh, mm-hmm. Only issue is you know a lot of that, a lot of the same features, uh, u- uses and nuances are not going to be the same in uh, Adobe Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro or Avid, which is pretty much your three choices for video editing when you get into the professional level. Um, that being said, um, I video edit. Mm-hmm. I've got Final Cut on every single computer I own, and I'm still learning things every day. Yeah, absolutely. And and so you're in the midst of a learning curve that is just an ongoing learning curve. It's always ongoing with video because there's new transitions coming out. There's new titles right. coming out. There's new plugins coming out, transitions, uh, everything. And like you said, learning it on the, um, the Mac base, whatever, mm-hmm. That's quite a bit different than learning it on the Windows side. A hundred percent different. So making that switch when you, if and when you get to the point where you decide to make a switch for whatever reason, that's going to be a big deal. So you want to make that kind of a switch as early in your life cycle as possible. And I do want to say something, you know, people argue all the time, Windows versus Mac, Windows versus Mac. Uh, There is one very definitive statistic here when it comes to video editing and media. Video editing software, photo editing software, uh, the Adobe line of products, the Final Cut line of products, um, statistically run six to seven times faster on a Mac computer simply based on the infrastructure of the hardware and the operating system itself. Okay. So, and I just learned this like in a PC magazine the other day. They're like, this is one of the only legitimate uh, arguments against PC right now is that uh, number one is security, but number two, when it comes to, to media, mm-hmm. Mac is faster. Even if you have the same hardware, just because of how the computer works, it's faster. Hmm. So I so will this s- was an independent, objective perspective. PC Mag, yep. yep. Um, and therefore PCs, so it must have been really independent if they were saying what they were <laughs> saying. Um, but anyway, that being said, I made the switch from Windows to Mac three or four years ago. I still have the same first Mac computer I bought. I still use it every day, and it runs just as fast as our brand new 5k Mac. Yeah, no, it's, it's absolutely amazing. It really is. And I think, I think with the exception of those diehard windows people, it's relatively well known that the Mac is what's been sort of the standard for video editing for over media. the years. Yeah. yeah. For and media. you're not, you're not a Mac user. No, I'm not a Mac user and I haven't tested that. I haven't actually done any editing myself. He's a but stock owner, but not a hardware owner. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. Um, but I see what's happening in the market. So it's pretty clear to me, but anyways, oh, weird. Um, anyways, <laughs> So Yeah, so that's, uh, I I just think that's something that's been pretty well known over the years. And it seems to be continuing along that that road. Yeah, no, absolutely. And when it comes to video editing, you're really learning a couple key things. You're taking snippets of video that you want to put together. You're trying to tell a story in the clips that you're putting together. Um, You're putting transitions in between some of those clips to display different visual themes. Like if you're fading to black, it's normally a change in time. If you dissolve, it's kind of the same scene, but maybe a change in mentality. Uh, You know, different transitions represent different things. And that's why you see a lot of television now just using straight jump cuts. It's one scene to the next scene to the next scene to the next scene. There's no transition, but there are places for transitions. You'll learn about titles, and then you'll learn about masks. But essentially what you're going to do is take clips of video, put it in a timeline, put music over it, try to tell a story with those different clips of footage, and output it, voila. Right. That, that is the basis of video editing. Sounds so easy. No. Which leads me actually to sort of the tail end of his question, and that is tips and tricks. And so obviously that's a very, very broad question, and we could probably spend hours talking about that and really getting into that. But just a couple of 
main main points. Something like keep it simple when you're getting started. Don't try to overcomplicate things. Any ideas like that for a beginning editor that they want to incorporate into their editing? Um, I would say try to try to edit one particular style of video, like real estate videos, where it's okay. exterior transition segue shot, interior transition segue shot, back to exterior video ends. That way you learn like a system of video mm -hmm. editing. Um, I think that would be really helpful. Also, you shot the footage, you have an idea of how it should look. The best tip and trick I can give you is learn to organize your footage via time codes right now. What do I mean? Open up an Excel sheet. The first column, video file name, description, what you see in the video, time code, at what time in the video is the particular shot that you want, and then the last item you can say like maybe where you want it in the video. So go through all of your clips and grab the time code, which means if I've got a great time lapse on my GoPro and it's GPRO456.mp4, and I love second five to second 15, mm -hmm. that's what's gonna be in there. The name, what is it? It's a time lapse. What time code do I want? That way, when you're putting together your timeline, which is your timeline is all of your clips put together, you know exactly what you want to see so you can systematically go through the footage because the way that these different video editing machines organize your footage could overwhelm a new guy immediately. So what I hear you saying, number one, is to be organized. Yes. And number two is to spend a little bit of time planning out your video. Yes. As opposed to just jumping in, because I think you're going to end up frustrated if you do that, particularly as a beginner. Then, yeah. It's worth a few minutes, if not several minutes, before you ever start your editing process of really thinking through what you want the final product to look like. It's true. So do that. 100% true. 100% true. So iMovie is a good place to start for someone who's Mac. You mentioned that. What about a Windows person? Somebody's going to start on a Windows uh, side. To be 100% honest, the very first video I ever edited ever before drone you before drones before media anything was Windows Media Player and I taught myself and I made a video for my travels to Prague with my friends okay um, and it turned out pretty good it was all photos though there was no actual video clips that's the funny thing so it's a video of photos so is that the same thing as Windows Movie Maker or is that different I think so I think maybe that's yeah, the new name I, of it I or think something that's it. but but for someone who's brand new, I mean, to figure out if you even like it, because editing can be tedious, right? Yeah, but Windows Media Maker doesn't make it easier. No, no but, but my point is just it's going to at least give you a feel for the process. Oh, yeah, totally. Right? And so you're going to be able to get in there and not spend any money on it and figure out, do I even like this process? Is it something that I want to do? Because to get good at it, it's going to take a lot of time. It is. And when you can hire someone for $15 an hour to get it done in a few hours, you're going to learn why video editing is outsourced in most businesses. Yeah. That said, like, as far as I'm concerned, any business in any facet of your business, within reason, the more you understand what you're having somebody else do, the better you're going to be able to monitor the product they're giving you. True. So there is that side of the editing as well. That is so true. Anyways. Anyway, I think that is going to do it for us. Don't forget, if you're ready to turn your passion into profit, check out DroneUlive.com. That's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You.